it's actually going to increase the access to care as we're seeing an overcrowding of emergency rooms and clinics. Is telemedicine the future of health care? We talk to two doctors when we come back. 811, welcome back everybody. There's a term heard in medical circles that's becoming the new normal in the coronavirus era. Telemedicine, and it's on the rise. Vanessa Borge has more on what could be a growing trend. And Vanessa, I know this firsthand because I had an appointment with my doctor via telemedicine. There you go. It really is the future of medicine. But how does telemedicine work and could it lead to a misdiagnosis? We spoke to experts about it. Hello. Your next checkup could be from the comfort of your home. There we go. Looks good. So essentially, it's like going to the doctor, but you're doing it online. Exactly. It's a virtual visit. And you can get prescriptions after a telemedicine meeting with your doctor? Yes, absolutely. But telemedicine is nothing new. Telemedicine, actually, it's been around since about the 1960s. It was used quite a bit from 2005 to 2017. Since the COVID-19 pandemic paused non-essential medical treatments, the world is getting a better idea of how telemedicine works. Great job. Now, can you take a deep breath with your tongue out? Do you think that a doctor can really diagnose you through a computer screen? Yes, you know, it's getting to the point now where you know, we can exchange virtual images, we can exchange information, and especially for these non-urgent cases. The Southern California Orthopedic Institute is one of those non-urgent cases. If you're having issues with your bones, joints, and muscles, you can call in and get checked out. I actually did break my wrist. I have a plate and 10 screws <laughs> in my wrist right now. How would we do our checkup? So you can actually hold it up and I could see a very uh, detailed parts of your wrist. I could take snapshots to document that in the medical record. I could have you do emotions, range of motion to determine your stiffness. I can see how your muscle strength is. Dr. Paul Simic uses MyChart. It's an app that puts your health information in the palm of your hand. You're already ready to go on your device to start the, the communication, the audio, the visual, just like we're doing right now. And it seems technology is something patients want. Software research company Software Advice conducted a recent study. They found that 84% of Americans are more likely to select a provider that offers telemedicine over one that doesn't. Improving the access while also decreasing cost in healthcare is, is going to be huge. Another advantage, telemedicine could potentially reduce costs. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, the United States spent $9,403 in health care costs per capita in 2016. Telemedicine could be a silver lining coming from this scary time. It is safer for now, and even in the future, it could also be more convenient for people. And this could be used for mental health patients as well. And as you saw from my own example, physical therapy, you don't need to go to a clinic. You can just mimic therapies right in your home. The possibilities are truly endless. And this really could be the future of medicine. Tony Roxia. Boy, I'll tell you, uh, things have certainly changed and we can expect more changes in the future. Vanessa, thank you.